Hey, I'm Dustin. And I'm Steve. Welcome back to the Wedding Photo Hangover Podcast, the finest phototainment in the world. We are an irreverent look at photography. This podcast, like aspirin, will help you recover from your wedding hangover. Whew. Made it. Made it through that. Got it. Got it done. Yeah. Dustin. Steven. How you doing, bud? I am surviving by, I like to think of... Um, fourth quarter stretch not much of a sports guy but i'm i'm thinking that that analogy works like somehow you know we're in the end zone we almost know we're almost to the end zone the ball's in the air we just need to we need to put it in you need to dunk it home for the grand slam probably yeah exactly exactly we just need to snitch we just need to catch the snitch Mm -hmm. you might get that hat trick if you try real hard yeah yeah all those sports metaphors Mm mm-hmm yeah you just got to nutmeg your opponents, so. Nutmeg? Mm-hmm. What the hell is that? <laughs> oh, Dustin. I think you, you made you that never, one up. You never played soccer, did you? <laughs> <laughs> I think you made that one up. That one, you're trying to slide on, slide under me, on mm-hmm. me, in me? Oh, yeah. Just okay. slid right under you. Just like the ball going under your legs. So it is October, in case... In case uh, you're out there and you're listening to this episode five months from now and you're like, why Why are Dustin and Steve seem like they're half drunk more so than normal? Um, it is because it is October, which is the busiest time of the year for us uh, Midwestern uh, stateside wedding and photographer professionals. And uh, Stephen and I are barely holding it together, but we love and care about you guys so much. We bring it every week. Even though Steve was supposed to find someone else to record with him last night. But we're not going to go there. We're not going to go I there. I couldn't find anybody. Sorry. Nobody uh, loves so, him as much as me. So Steve, Steve was shooting stuff for Jen the last two days because she's been sick all week. And so she couldn't end up doing her shoots that she had planned. So Steve didn't have any time to look for someone. You tell Jennifer that there's no time to get sick in October. And the three people Steve contacted all were busy. So... Sorry, Dustin. I failed you, buddy. I look sickness in the face in September and I say, hey, sickness, you can have a free ride in November, but October is a no-fly zone, my friends. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Unfortunately, Jen gets sick basically every October. It's always like a throat thing, too. Oh, I'm shoving multivitamins down my my mouth hole like they're Kit Kats. Mm -hmm. You know, those are rectal, right? Yeah. 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 yeah, you're putting them in the wrong hole. That's all going to help holes. you out. Yeah, put them in all I put the them holes. Put them up my nose. That's a good idea. In my ears. Not getting sick. Not happening. Mm-hmm. That's what, what I like to hear. I mean, you got to plug up that rectum so that, you know, you don't mm-hmm. get any diseases up there. Plug it up with multivitamins. Now that everyone who might have been into our podcast has now turned it off <laughs> and the true listeners are still with us, uh, I went to a haunted castle tonight, Steve. Ooh, how was that? Have you ever been to one of those haunted house, haunted castle, haunted jail Not scenarios? Since I was a kid. Doesn't Indy have like a haunted uh, like amusement park? We've got like a scream park. I see billboards for every year. I've never been. No desire to go. I don't. I don't do jump scares. I don't do scares. I don't do horror. I don't do thrillers. I don't do uh, scary anything. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I watched Jaws I'm once, sorry. and I've never gone in the ocean again. <laughs> I forget that sometimes it's like I'm talking to the male version of my wife. Um, no, I uh, I somehow talked her into going with me this evening because she's the same way. Um, she hasn't been since she was 15. Sensible, uh, rational. Is that how you would describe her as well? <laughs> that, Pragmatist. Um, yes, exactly. The person who gets um, things done. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But uh, also scaredy cat is, you know, one of those words. I keep telling her, so the local haunted house castle thing, it's called a castle. It's just an, an old church that they turned into this haunted house um, and call it a castle. It's run by the local Boy Scout troop. So I keep telling her, these are just fat Boy Scouts, Corinne. Like, don't worry about it. And even though she knows, she's still terrified. It's just a very interesting inside look to the human mind. Even though you know these are just small children, you're still terrified. Was well, she, she like was. a vomit your brains out, pee your pants sort of scared? Or how, how would you rate her scaredness? Yeah, uh, she, she the castle didn't scare her very much. 
but the uh they have what's also called the black forest which we went to mm-hmm. that one is more the they jump out of the woods at you kind of thing that doesn't sound like fun i don't think i would like to do this so what i do steven is i turn it into a game so the castle was not fun for me because i can't play my game my game is to flip the script steve mm-hmm. and i try to scare them so I make Corinne be really quiet and we creep through the park and then I try to get, you know, enough distance behind the next group so I know when the people are going to jump out. And then I come around the corner and I scream at them. Oh, Steven, it's priceless. Seeing the scarer get scared. <sighs> something <laughs> something is beautiful. This, is this the real reason why you're an hour late to record tonight? Because you got arrested? <laughs> At a Boy Scout haunted house. As long as you don't touch them, everything's fair and love and scare. <laughs> and love and scare. <laughs> mm-hmm. You like what I did there? Yeah. No, I mean, it sounds like a spooky evening. Yeah. It Doesn't... was pretty much my wife's <laughs> opposite of ideal date night. Oh, this was a date night? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. I, you really screwed everything up tonight. First, there's that whole segment I'm going to have to cut out because of the embarrassing story you shared about your wife. Then Unless you, listen you to Patreon. go ahead and say that you freaking <laughs> took her there on a date to a place you knew she would hate. Why would you do this, Dustin? Because sometimes, Stephen, she does things for me. I'm sorry. That sounded super sexual. I, we're going to have to start this whole thing over. We're like seven minutes in and now I got to start the whole thing over. No, it's just that oh, she, she wouldn't let me go to the haunted castle with my daughter who's three I now. thought this is going to be an easy week. I thought, you know, we're both really busy. We got to crank this episode out. We got to get oh, through no. it real fast. And here There's you no are crank in this. trying. <laughs> you got to put in the ingredients, Steve. We got to cook the pudding. You got to crank it if you want to get the pudding out. How about you? Did you do anything fun this week? Oh, it just, I told you earlier, Jen has been sick all week. Nora has been sick no, most that, of the that week. that was not fun. I want, did you do anything fun this week? Uh, we went trunk or treating tonight. Halloween Tech in downtown Indy. Yeah. Yeah. The trunk or treating event though is, uh, the closest like weekend before Halloween. So. So is it like a bunch of wedding photographers that are like, ah, oh, Halloween's too close to a Saturday. <laughs> I got to go on a Friday before. night. <laughs> No, I don't think there are any wedding photographers there. There are two photo booths set up. Jen and I got there when the thing opened. It opened at 6. We got there at like 5.50. So like we were one of the first people in. And it was already packed by the time we got in. Like We had to wait in a line that was like half a block long. There were two photo booths inside of this thing. By the time we got to the photo booths, they had both been shut down. I don't know if they weren't working or if somebody broke them or what happened, but they're both gone. And this is why Steven doesn't do a photo booth service. <laughs> Not at events like this, no. Mm. Well, both the photo booths, it looked like, were the kinds where you put an iPad up with a ring light, you know? Oh. On the like a stand. Ones. Yeah. And uh, I think, if I had to guess, I'd say there's a lot of kids there in costumes. You don't want to leave an iPad up on a stand and walk away. Mm-hmm. I, had a, mm-hmm. I had a wedding a little while ago where the groom made his own photo booth yeah, And he built it. It was like a solid wood podium with like the photo booth inserted. It looked super cool. And then uh, he had like a ring light that he built into the uh, wood podium with the iPad. So it wasn't like a tripod or something that could get knocked over really easy. Like like these things that I saw, it, they weren't even really tripods. They looked more like light stands, you know, like a small base mm-hmm. with like a tile, right. tall pole going off and an iPad on it with a ring light as well. And it's just like, that's so top heavy. And like the, the, the base was not big enough. And not, all I could think is it's probably a good idea that they shut those things down because there's a lot of kids there. It's just going to get destroyed. Why would you destroy your gear? Mm. Somebody probably <sighs> volunteered to do a photo booth. And they're like, I'm not staying here for this. Uh, one was a radio station, and, then, and they tore the uh, photo booth down, and they stayed at the car and handed out candy for the rest of the night. So, Wow. Interesting. Maybe they needed Wi-Fi or something, and they were like, oh, oh yeah, I didn't the think iPad. about that. It could be that they needed Wi-Fi. They forgot the iPad mm-hmm. with the cell connection or whatever. Yeah. Good, very or good point. was like, oh, we're out of data. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we blew through 10 gigs of data in the first five minutes. All right, uh, this is over. It's true. 
So what are you uh, what are you drinking tonight, Stephen? Well, Dustin, let me tell you. Oh, oh, we got a pop, we got a can, we got a click. Oh, so good. Dustin, my man. Tonight, I got that Dragon's Milk White Bourbon Barrel Aged Ooh. White Stout. That's right. New Dragon's Milk. What's what, What's the white all about? Uh, it's, I saw this it's a style, at the store. Style of, a style of beer. It's different than a stout. It's a white stout, so... Here we go. First sips. It's good. Not as good as Dragon's Milk. Not as good as Dragon's Milk. Tastes uh, a little sharper. Um, doesn't really have like that uh, bourbon barrel f- flavor to it that I would typically expect from a Dragon's Milk. Um, yeah, no, uh, it's weird. Maybe like for a white stout, if I if I drink a lot of other white stouts, like I would drink this and I'd be like, oh, this. This is bourbon barrel age white stout. This, but this stout has definitely been whitened. Yeah, com- coming off me, who normally just drinks regular dragon's milk, this is kind of like this. Just kind of tastes like a normalish beer. So it's like I'm not sure what kind of bleach they use to whiten this one, but this stout's definitely been whitened. Yeah, no, I would say like first sip of this kind of tastes like mm, just. There's no, there's no essence of bourbon barrel in this at all, but uh, it just kind of tastes like a regular beer, uh, almost a little, little, little sharp, a little, little bit of sour to it for a stout, you know? That's weird, dude. It's supposed to be smooth, creamy, and legendary, but I'm not really getting the gr- creaminess from it at all. Dustin, what just are you drinking legendary? over there? Just, you're just getting the legendary. Yeah. Dustin, I think you would actually like this. Probably. If you don't like it, typically that means I would really like it. No, I, I like it. It's just not what I expected. So then I would just be like kind of so-so with it. No, my expectations were very high, and uh, it just isn't meeting them. It's it's not a bad beer by any measure. It's just not what I expected. So my expectations were very low for this beer that I'm consuming this evening. Bud Light Lime? Uh, Is it a Bud Light but, Lime? <laughs> but now that I've tried it, I'm quite enjoying it. Since I figured we are recording so late, I'm drinking an Elysian Night Owl. And since it's October, this is their pumpkin ale. Mm -hmm. As I promised you listeners, I would drink an October pumpkin beer this whole month. Um, And this one's actually really, really good. This is a, a pumpkin ale brewed with pumpkin roasted and raw pumpkin seeds, spiced and conditioned with nutmeg, clove, cinnamon, ginger, and allspice. It's practically a pumpkin pie, it sounds like. Does it taste like a pumpkin pie, though? Uh, a little bit. A little bit. And I don't like pumpkin pie, and I like this. So it tastes more like, um, have you ever had that pumpkin loaf bread from Starbucks? No. No. Mm. I get coffee like at they, Starbucks. If they, like, put that into a coffee... And then turned it into a beer. That's what the, that's what this would taste like. Mm. Mm-hmm. It's good though. It's good. It's good stuff. So do we uh, we have some follow up? Yeah. No, I had the uh, the night owl last year, and yeah. I remember it having like a distinctly yammy flavor to it. Would that mm-hmm. be like a like a sweet potato? Like, but like mm. with cinnamon and sugar. Yeah, maybe a little bit. I guess yeah. I could see that. I mean, it's the same kind of spice that you put it, in the it has yams strong, as you put in pumpkin pie, right? Right. It has a strong, uh, like a cinnamon nutmeggy flavor going on, which is why I think I like it. Mm. Dustin, we do have some follow-up this week. Dustin. Follow me up, Steve. Follow trademark John Syracuse. Mm. Uh, we got mattress updates, Dustin. You told everybody <gasps> on the bing, podcast bing, bing, about bing. your journey through the mattress world when you and Corinne were mattress shopping. Uh, what, what was the mattress you guys finally settled on? We settled on uh, the Purple Three, which is the not the firmest, not the softest, kind of right in that sweet spot, or so I thought. Um, so, so, so you thought. Yep. We was have was there sl- another person sleeping on it? Is there another person's uh, opinion that would come into this? Apparently, when you co-sleep with your spouse, significant other, soulmate, 
etc. Um, their spine and back and hips and all of that stuff, I guess, matter in the equation. Um, I should preface that we both decided on this mattress in the store when we bought it. Mm. Um, we both agreed on it. I it thought was purple kind of a, was like an internet only thing. You could buy that in the store. Den, was Denver it Denver mattress? Denver was it mattress an carries as the purple. seen on TV store. <laughs> No, so the perk of buying it in the store was, and I'm glad we did, because they have a, um, Denver Mattress offers a return policy that is was better than what Purple Mattress offered. Purple's was, what, a 100-day sleep yep. on it guarantee. If you don't like it, they'll take it away or whatever. Correct. Whereas, um, and it had to be exchanged or whatever for a purple mattress. Oh. Whereas Denver mattress was, since you're buying it from them directly, you could exchange it. You had a 360 day exchange, but there was a sliding scale on how much you got back throughout that 360 day. So does that mean somewhere at Denver mattress, there's a used purple mattress with dustin's dna all over it that somebody could probably buy. Uh, yeah it's probably worth more um <laughs> now but uh so yeah we it's so worth we more with missed, the stains exactly the numerous stains so the first six months you get a hundred percent in-store credit towards a new mattress and we were outside of that six months by six and a half months um mm. so half a month so that's how long it took my wife to decide how much she hated that mattress. And, um, yeah, I was pretty upset. I was pretty mad. I was like, why were you silently hating this mattress and not telling me <laughs> until right after the hundred percent refund exchange period? Um, so we exchanged it and we got 75% in store credit towards a new mattress. Um, so we, we're frugal and we bought one that we could afford without paying any extra. Mm -hmm. So we lost 25% of our money essentially. And how does this mattress feel compared to the it purple? Just came, it just came today. So I will sleep on it tonight and I will update you next week. Oh, Dustin, Dustin, Dustin. Do you want to know what kind we got? Yeah. We got the purple mattress number two. <laughs> Instead of the number three? Yeah. So it's the firmer of the two or of the whatever ones that number of them they have. Mm -hmm. um, Would so you say that you need a firm hand? I don't, but my wife does. Mm, you like to play it a little bit looser? A little bit looser, like a little bit of squish to my gush, where she likes a little bit of firm to her worm, if you know what I mean. Better start working out, buddy. <laughs> uh, no. Dustin, I got an update for you. Oh, update me, Steve. Last week, you said you had an iMac that basically was not functional anymore? Uh, I mean, by all accounts, because the OS is so outdated. And you were looking for a way to turn that iMac into a second screen. Mm -hmm, Dustin, mm -hmm. what, what would you know? Luna Display, the company that used to make the things that you could plug into your Mac and turn your iPad into a second display, they got Sherlocked by Apple this year, uh, which that's just a term that means... Apple released an app that made your app no longer worth buying because Apple now Ooh. does whatever your app did in like their operating system. So like with the new Catalina and everything, uh, you can mirror, you can use like your iPad as like a second screen. So there's not really a market really? for Luna Display to do that anymore. But Apple doesn't offer a way for you to turn a Mac into a second screen for your Mac. Enter Luna Until Display now. now. They've pivoted. And now you can get a Luna Display Mac to Mac uh, th dongle, plug into your computer, and it makes your computer think that you have a display on the other end. And then it uh, talks with your Mac and turns your other Mac into a display for you. Wow. Uh, I think it costs like sixty nine ninety nine for the dongle. So you're going to try it? No, I don't have a secondary Mac that I could oh. use for that. That's you do. You have a secondary Mac. I have many Macs. I have a table of Macs back there. Mac table. You have Mac table back there. We call it the Mac Daddy table. No Mac mommies allowed. I'm just saying, Dustin, you could have that second display that you've always wanted. Just like that. Boom. Done. Boom. And you can thank me. Okay. Put it on my Christmas list. 
Dustin, let's get to the show. Dustin, did you shoot a wedding last week? Uh, yeah. Shot at Purdue, which I was hoping you'd be the <sighs> photographer at. How'd the Purdue wedding go? Uh, the brides, there's two brides. Um, they, one was an hour late and the other was two hours late. So it's sort of one of those moments I was really happy I was doing the video and not the photo because I was watching the photographer just kind of pace up and down while we're waiting. Mm -hmm. And I, we're supposed to do all the photos beforehand. And I turn to him just kind of half joking, half serious. And I say, so, um, what's the latest, like, have you ever had a wedding where like you've had to take all the photos that were supposed to be before the ceremony and have to fit them in after? And he's like, no. And then I get to see the wheels turning as if like he realized I was trying to say like, cause that might happen today. Mm -hmm. And, uh, then I think he was really starting to freak out. Wait, why was he, why was that making him freak out? Because the brides were supposed to get to Purdue uh -huh. and get kind of right into their dress and go right into the straight into the first look. They were wearing and a shared dress. Dresses. Okay. And um, I just thought that'd be an interesting way to get married. Two people getting into the same dress, walking down the well, aisle they, together. They both wore the same dress, just different dresses okay I, I was imagining like a stuck on me scenario where uh they, they both just had the same ring they'd been twins siamese twins for so long that after they were separated they just needed to latch back onto each other yeah but but yeah it was a great wedding um i'd never photographed well in this case filmed at um the purdue stadium before mm -hmm. So in so Stuck On Me, um, the thing is they're Siamese twins and they have to have like special clothes made for them that like will fit over both of them because they're attached at the hip. Have you seen Stuck On Me? I don't believe I have. That's what I'm imagining for your brides right now. Okay. It's with Greg Kinnear and Matt Damon. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, I was actually shooting this wedding uh, for Luke uh, of Unscripted Visuals and... Uh, he wasn't like too worried about the, the Luke delay. Luke is kind because... of like your Siamese twin, you could almost say. Like mm -hmm. you and Luke walk everywhere together, hip to hip, this, all the time. This year, it seems Just like, like it. in the hit movie, Stuck on Me, with Matt Damon but, and Greg Kinnear. Yeah. So we, were, we weren't too worried about the delay simply because Luke's package that they'd booked him for was only a four minute highlight film. Mm -hmm. And we we're like, oh, we just need, you know, a handful of good shots to pull that off with everything else that you know, the ceremony is going to happen. The reception is going to happen. As long as we have some like good portraits, you know, we'll be fine. And as soon as they do the first look, she like turns to Luke and she's like, by the way, uh, I didn't tell you this earlier, but I do want to upgrade to the six to seven minute film. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Which essentially the difference in that is just adding a crap ton more of the portrait time. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and then a little bit more meat from the, uh, ceremony. And we're like, okay, then we're going to need to keep you out here a little bit longer. <laughs> Ooh, good times. Yeah. How about you? Did you have a wedding this weekend? Yeah. Yeah. Jen and I had a wedding down in uh, New Harmony, Indiana. That's right. Yeah. That's where you were indoctrinated into the cult. You had to sacrifice mm -hmm. a goat. So the reason I said New Harmony was like a place for cults in the last episode is because uh, they have twice tried to start like utopia utopias in New Harmony, like utopic s societies. Um, mm -hmm. and both, both experiments have failed, wildly failed. So, but it, it's like, a, it's a cool little town. It kind of has like a Salem witch trials vibe to it. Can you explain to the listeners what a Salem witch trial vibe is? Yeah. It's like a, a very old town where you can imagine like the movie Hocus Pocus being shot because witches will probably be killed somewhere, you know? Mm. Yeah. Gotcha. So like Noblesville. No, no. Noblesville is like a forward progressive place. It's a uh, very cool. Okay. Actually, New Harmony was surprisingly forward and progressive. It was, it was a pretty cool place too, but it just, it has like that look and feel of like a old town. It was Did like everything uh, was everything like New Harmony, this New Harmony, that like New Harmony for savings. We new stayed Harmony. at the New Harmony Inn and resort center. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> and resort center. Yeah. 
What made it resort like? Was there a water several slide? several different buildings, a pool, a giant uh, piece of land with like wooded areas, uh, a lake called Swan Lake that was like two lakes with like a canal going between them, and two actual swans that live at Swan Lake. <gasps> wow. Yeah. That um, is resort like. Yeah. There's the roofless church, which is a church that doesn't have a roof. It's just walls. And then like a sanctuary dome with the creepiest statue I've ever seen in my entire life inside of it. It's is a that statue where they got that no, they got married at the Inn and Resort. They didn't get married at the creepy cult church. Uh, Man. Yeah, no, the, the the church has like a wood or a stone statue underneath its like dome sanctuary area. And Jen and I walked over there at night, pitch black, and the statue just has like this really dim light on it. And so from far away, it just looks like this demonic angel creature being staring out at you. Um, hmm. And like when you get closer, you see it kind of looks like a hooded figure with a dove flying straight down into its head. Uh, and the dove is like in a cross shape, like wings out, head down, tail up. So it'd be like an upside down cross. It's real creepy looking. So that's, that's fantastic though. yeah and it looks like the robes of the robed figure are then like tentacles that like wrap up and around it making like an upside down heart around it it's just real weird and creepy so yeah, yeah. no it's great we walked all the way up there at night they leave the doors open all night long for our visitors to come and see um yeah it doesn't have any like creepy witch vibes at all in the whole town no and i could definitely see like an episode of uh the chilling tales of sabrina being shot there so did you kneel down and pray? <laughs> oh, gosh, no. I ran as fast as I could, and I looked over my shoulder often to see if maybe it was a weeping angel that was chasing me. You never know. You never know. You never know. Other than so that, the wedding we... was really good. The uh, The bride was a photographer, and um, she actually took like a, a class with that Jen put on at one point in time, and like that's when she became like a... A client of Jen's from like a photo education standpoint, and then later, you know, now it's like a client from a pho- hiring us to do photography standpoint. Wow! Yeah, so it's real cool, man. I-, I love working with other photographers, like for their weddings and stuff like that. I mean, it means a lot, like knowing another photographer would hire you, somebody who's actually like in the business and knows <laughs> what looks good to them and stuff, and they think your stuff looks good too. Because, you know, when you work with people who aren't photographers, there's so many of them who just uh, say stuff that just doesn't make any sense. Like they maybe don't know anything about photography and they just they're into like fads that they see on Instagram and stuff, you know. So, I mean, you've shot a lot of photographers, too. You know, you know what I mean? Like it just it feels good to be hired by a peer. Does it? It does, man. You've never hired me. That's not true. That's 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 only kind of true. We've recommended you. <laughs> okay, just saying. Um, I believe you're going to do some photos of Jen and I in a few weeks. So, I think that's more out of necessity than <laughs> out of necessity. There are hundreds of thousands of photographers here in Indianapolis that we could choose. Mm-hmm. 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 Yeah. Can we can we share what Corey Wiseman sent us? Oh, can we ever? Before, yeah, go before for we it. get too deep into the show, because mm-hmm. this just this uh, this is I just have to put this out there because this is such a quinky dink. Uh, Corey Wiseman sent this in, dude. So I was debating telling you this, but something really weird happened to me. Now keep in mind this is like Halloween time, so this you know sidebar there. All right. <clears throat> So I normally listen to the podcast in the car, and that's it. Well, really busy this month. So on top of driving a lot, I've been editing a lot and business shit. I've started listening to the podcast while at the computer and catching up. Uh, Just so people know, business shit is a term. It refers to when you're editing so much, you literally can't stop editing when you have to use the restroom. So Mm -hmm. you just have to go straight to the toilet. And yep. uh, have your laptop or your iPad, whatever you're editing on, maybe an iPhone, and you, you just keep doing the work, you know? You're doing you the work time. while you're doing the work. Yeah. You yeah. know, like normally when you go to the bathroom, you're checking those Insta stories, you know, you're posting to Instagram, you're tagging your clients. No, not this time of the year. You are editing while you're shitting. 
Yeah. And I mean, business time takes a whole different turn during this time of the year, because usually business time is a term we all know from Flight of the Concords that just refers to, you know, having sex. But mm -hmm. during the business time of the year, uh, it's it means that literally while you're having sex, you're still editing photos. Unless unless Corey's having sex while he's taking a shit. That's disgusting, Dustin. Why would you <laughs> why would you ever do this? This is worse than Cinderella's ballroom gangbang. Hey, you went there, oh, not me. No, you um, went there. No, nope. you went I there. I edited memory. the episode. Memory. You were the one who said those words. I think yep. you actually said beautiful gangbang. <laughs> you were really enraptured by the gangbang. Just fit the acronym. Oh gosh. Um, Did it? <laughs> Did it? <laughs> still does. But um anyway, so Corey went on to say, I started listening to the podcast at the computer and catching up. Well, too much of you and Dustin is a bad thing, I guess. Two nights ago, I'm having a mm, really good sleep. Yeah. Tell me more about this good sleep, Cody. And Corey is dreaming. Have you been saying Clark Corey this whole time? That's what you put in the text to me. Damn slide keyboard. <laughs> It's Cody Wiseman. Oh, my gosh. That's why I couldn't find him when I looked him up on the group. <laughs> oh, man. I've been experimenting with Apple's new slide keyboard, uh, moving j j gradually away from Gboard, just, you know, trying to try out the new one that Apple just put out. And uh, it's it's been failing me just as much as Gboard. But because it comes from Apple, I don't think to go back and uh, check it as much as I do with Gboard. It's just so much faster to slide that finger across those keys. You know what I'm saying? Now I got to start all over. <laughs> We're not starting Steve. over. It's Cody Wiseman. Steve. Nope. Nope. Steve. <laughs> Get back to the dream. Let's go. God, you're terrible. You're going to make me sound awful. You, you um, wouldn't have been able to find it in the Instagram anyway because Cody DM'd me. He didn't DM. No, the one I he tried to look over. for him in our group. Oh, okay. <laughs> you didn't search for the last name because I spelled that no, right. I just typed in Corey. <laughs> Oh man, All right. good stuff. And then I found one on Facebook from Florida, and I was like, "Wait, he said he doesn't live in the states." <laughs> so confused right now. He's from New Haven, Indiana. New Haven. All right. Uh, so to get back on track, Cody's been yes. binging the podcast while driving, while editing, while doing a lot of stuff. He's yep. trying to catch up on old episodes he hasn't listened to yet. He's also trying to catch up on Stephen Dustin Save the World because yep. he is a Patreon subscriber. Dustin, the best Q, Q yep. in now where you left so, off. Two nights ago, he's having a great sleep, dreaming of going back to the States, and he walks into a new house we bought. And boom, you and Dustin, meaning Steve, Steve and Dustin are standing there. I'm like, what the fuck are you doing in my house? And Steve says, we're going to save the world. And looks over at Dustin, and Dustin says, yep, it's in the show notes. <laughs> then I woke up and was like, what the fuck was that? Dude, I have to make the responsible decision to not listen to the podcast anymore. Where, Cody, I have to disagree with you, and I think you need to listen more so that Stephen and I can just be in all of your dreams, both waking and sleeping, so that maybe, maybe this is you know, the podcast God's way of trying to tell you, we need to save your world, Cody. Maybe it is. Yeah. I'm just lucky. I'm glad that this dream didn't end him up in a CBGB with us. You know, <laughs> this could have gone real weird. Instead, it was just, you know, the, the so he, he described it as a weird dream. And I think the weird thing for him was the part where I said, we're here to save your world. I looked over at you as if for affirmation, I assume, which would never happen in the real world. And oh, then you, Dustin yeah. say, yep, it's in the show notes. Something Dustin would never know unless he literally has the show notes up in front of his face and he's reading off of them. Yeah, the only thing that would have made this story better, Cody, is if you said that then there was a tall blue Smurf or Avatar-like <laughs> creature that Sexy came one. and put his arm around you. Um, that's what would make this story better for me. Mm, yeah. And then Cinderella walked out with a ball gag, and uh, it just got real weird from there. Cinderella's ball gag? 
ballroom. <laughs> yeah. You know, just twisting it up a little. Okay. Wow. Oh, yeah. man. Man. So, wow. with that being said, uh, thanks so much for listening. <laughs> Cody, you can now turn off the podcast and we'll continue this podcast for the rest of our listeners. Oh, now that you've been sufficiently embarrassed, I'm assuming. I did clear this with Cody. He said it was okay for us to talk about on the podcast. Oh, should we jump right in? Dustin, this week I have been seeing a lot, of, not just this week, like the past few weeks, I've been seeing a lot of stuff on the internet Uh about specifically Instagram. So we got like three things in the show notes here <clears throat> I want to talk about. One, Jay from a random Facebook group, he says, okay, so I just did the unthinkable. I deleted my Instagram. I feel <gasps> that it has become too toxic and unhealthy. So my question mm -hmm. to all you amazing photographers is, how would you still promote your business slash brand? Hmm. So, maybe, uh, you maybe know, pay we, other we, businesses to post your stuff on their Instagram. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> pay $25 every time you want to post something on Instagram and just have another business post it. Yep. And tag you. <laughs> oh, Genius. Sh you deleted your Instagram. They can't tag you. Never mind. <laughs> they don't you, have to tag you. Just mention you. You know what? You can delete your Instagram. That's fine. And you can still promote your business slash brand on Instagram. You just need a Facebook page. You can promote to Instagram and sell ads on Instagram without having an Instagram account. That's what a lot of shit bags out there do. It seems, seems a little too sly for me. Yeah. I don't know. Is it too sly? It's like selling tacos without a Taco Bell. Whenever I see somebody do that, all I can assume is they run a really crappy business because... If they ran a good business that people liked, they would just be on Instagram. Mm -hmm. And then they could also promote on Instagram and it'd be fine. But if they're not on Instagram, usually it means like they are afraid they'd get a lot of bad public backlash to whatever they're posting, I assume. That's just my feeling on the subject matter. Yeah. Still undecided how I feel about Instagram, so. It's a toxic cesspool. It's worse than, it's worse than Twitter now. I'm just going to say it. So I like Instagram from a marketing and my business standpoint. Like I find there's a value add or else obviously I wouldn't be doing it. Where I get annoyed with Instagram is everyone else treating it like they're marketing their lives as if their lives are their business. And um, it's called influencers, yeah. Dustin, and that's how they make their money. Yeah, but it's you've the got 26,000 followers. You could be doing it, too. Oh, I know. I get emails daily and I tell them, sorry. Actually, funny thing, the side note here, side tangent. I uh, got a call today from somebody at the Knot slash Wedding Wire since they're one body, one unit of company. G unit. G unit. And um, they're like, hey, we wanted to call. We haven't talked to you in a year and a half. Wanted to see if you're interested in advertising. And I was like, oh, I'm so happy you called. Um, actually, I've been meaning to reach out to you. We just had one of our sponsors uh, drop out for a podcast. And I was wondering if you might call to sponsor our podcast. And they were like, wait, no, no, no. We, we're calling you about <laughs> advertising with us. I was like, oh, I'm sorry. You must have the wrong number. This is... Uh, Dustin with the Wedding Photo Hangover podcast, um, and they they were so confused, and they're like, do you, "Well, do you run Dustin and Crin Photography?" And I'm like, uh, "I mean, I, I'm a photographer at Dustin and Crin Photography, but I don't run it. Um, <laughs> I just manage this podcast." Uh, I'm not you... the Dustin of Dustin and Crin Photography. I'm just a I'm just Dustin a at Dustin, Dustin and Crin Photography. <laughs> and I was like, um, so do you guys want me to talk to you a little bit about advertising with our podcast? <laughs> <laughs> and they were like, uh, that's that's a different department altogether. And I'm like, oh, okay. So, well, I don't want to waste your time then. So um, call me back when you're ready to talk about advertising with us. No, oh, that's great. Yeah, it was it was a really dynamite moment in my day. Yeah. 
Did you see, we also got an email that at the wedding photo hangover from somebody that said they need limos in the next 48 hours. Is there any way we could help them? I saw that. I saw that. I was, I've been on the phone all day trying to secure those limos. Yeah. So you missed the part where I emailed them back and I said, I'm sorry, but if you're looking for someone to drive, we have a lot of drones available for you. <laughs> I miss that. I, this, so there must be in somewhere, someplace, there ha- must be a limo service or something called wedding, like wedding photo hangover. Hang- <laughs> not photo, but must be like wedding limo hangover or something. There's no way that's a thing. There's no way. It's just spam, random spam that's getting spammed out to all the spammers. Like you and me. We're professional spammers, spammers sending now. Sending spam yeah. to spammers. Yeah. <laughs> They're like they have a Patreon. <laughs> that's like <laughs> fishing. Really that's like money. fish fishing for fish. So user Rick underscore four three two on Reddit says social media has anyone else noticed a decline in engagement levels and how are you handling it? Hi everyone. In the past two point five months, I've noticed a pretty decent drop in engagement levels on one platform in particular. Any guesses as to which one? Instagram, Pinterest. of course. Oh, okay. I just wanted to open the conversation around this because in the modern day of social media, it's fair to assume that a large portion of wedding photographers, myself included, use the platform platform as a marketing tool, just like Dustin was saying earlier, to market our businesses. It comes as no surprise this is happening considering Instagram is trying to, and already has, monetize the platform and encourage us to pay for engagement slash reach. Location is probably relevant for this topic, so to let you know I'm based in Australia, it's not relevant to the topic. In my case, I used to achieve, on average, 250 likes for an average post. A great post would see me in the realm of 450 to 550 plus likes, and posts which weren't so popular would come in around 180 or just over. Lately, however, this seems to have dropped quite significantly. Since the start of August, I have posted 10 images, and out of those 10 images, 9 have only achieved around 140 likes. Nowhere near my norm. Reach levels also seem to be unusually lower during this recent period. Just to clarify, the 10 I'm referring to are my normal standard quality, and not what I would consider to be below quality. Firstly, I was wondering if anyone else has experienced a similar drop over the same period, or if it's just me. Secondly, I am curious as to how others are overcoming this ever-changing social media scene. Personally, I've tried paid advertising through Facebook ads on both platforms, Instagram and Facebook, and never had much luck. Are you now investing your time and money in other platforms and having success, or are you now pushing harder to have your work shared on blog platforms or in magazines? So, Dustin, I wanted to ask you, Steven. have you noticed a drop in engagement or reach on your Instagram? I know you don't pay a ton of attention to your Instagram. You hire people to do that for you. So, mm, yes. have you noticed anything? Have the people you hire said anything to you about that? Uh, I have noticed, uh, personally, a drop uh, the last f- three or four months um, in the engagement on our posts. But I didn't know if that was because we had been kind of posting irregularly. Mm-hmm. We went from a very scred- a very scheduled posting type scenario using Hootsuite. And Hootsuite really got sort of glitchy and stopped working for us. And so um, Lily, our studio manager, was kind of posting from her phone when she, you know, remembered and so it wasn't as scheduled. It wasn't as frequent. You know, we'd get three out in a week. And then the next week we'd have six out, you know, six posts. Yeah. So it, I wasn't sure if that was kind of messing with the algorithm. Uh, we've sw- we have since switched to the new, a new platform called Planoly, I believe mm-hmm. it was called. Yes. The one um, that James, James Kelly, Kelly was recommending yep. all over the place. And that, that paid scene... shill James Kelly was recommending all over the place. <laughs> How much is Planetly paying you, James Kelly? Uh, use promo code James K uh, when you sign up for it for nothing off. <laughs> and they actually um, charge you more. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's an Irish tax. <laughs> but um, <laughs> you asshole! <laughs> you asshole! <laughs> but um. Yeah, that seems to help with the scheduling aspect, but I don't know if they penalize you for using a scheduling platform because I've noticed that those photos are getting like zero reach. 
So like a month or two ago, Instagram sent out like messages, push notification messages to everybody, basically who is using third party apps saying, if you're using a third party app, we will ding you and we might even remove your account from Instagram. Yeah, I saw, I saw that cause they were like, change your password. Yes. Um, I got that because Jen and I use like a analytics tracking app with our Instagram accounts. Um, and it like helps us track who's following us, who unfollows us, who blocks us, all those sorts of stats. Cause otherwise like you can't see, otherwise like you either know you're going up or you're going down, but you don't know, like, like maybe you got 90 new followers, but you lost 50 and you don't know that all you know is you went up by 40, you know? So it helps right. you to kind of gauge like whether or not like you're gaining like <laughs> in this whether or not when you gain like a ton of followers, if you, your like actual number like doesn't go up from 10.5 to 10.6 because, you know, so many people have unfollowed you because otherwise you just wouldn't know that and you'd be kind of at a loss for it. So it's basically that sort of thing because Instagram at the time when we started using it, didn't really track any of that stuff. And Instagram still right. doesn't do a great job of tracking that, but they're a lot better now with their analytics if you have a business page. If you don't have a business page on Instagram, you don't get very good tracking. Um which you fought having a business page for the longest time. I've what? You I fought, fought having a business. Yeah. I created a Facebook page called Stephen Van Elk so that I could have an Instagram <laughs> business account for my Stephen Van Elk account. Yeah, I Dustin, know. I jumped on that right away. <laughs> um, yeah. So, but basically, ever since they sent that message out saying that, that's around the time when this guy, because it would have been like beginning of August when he first wrote this on, or it would have been end of August when he first wrote this, and those posts he posted were all over August. That was around the time period, beginning of August, when Instagram started cracking down on that sort of stuff. Um, and I have noticed like on Jen and I's accounts, we have much less engagement and reach now than we ever did in the past. Uh, but Jen and I also, for like the last year and a half, we've been getting much less engagement and reach on all of our posts. Uh we used to get like somewhere between like 500 and 800 likes per post and usually like 20 comments per post like two years ago. Um, and that was awesome. And it felt very good. We didn't see a ton of bookings through Instagram, but it felt really good, you know, for my ego. And I loved it. Mm -hmm. And then over like the last year and a half, it's just slowly been going down and down and down. We get less engagement, less reach. In my opinion, we're posting better photos than we did two years ago. Uh, we, get more Debatable. like dms about like the stuff we post we get more comments like off instagram from like our friends about stuff like that because our friends don't really comment on instagram so it feels like we're doing better work it feels like we should be getting more reach more engagement but we're just not so i i just feel like instagram's been cracking down super hard ever since they monetized the platform because they want you to pay for reach they want that reach around money they do. They certainly do. And I mean, it's yeah. their prerogative. It's, they're running a business. They're not running a free marketing platform. And I know we all wish it was a free marketing platform, but it's really not. And if you want to get like a ton of reach, if you want to book new clients through Instagram or Facebook, you got to start paying for it. You know, we've turned our attention and our energy towards Instagram stories. Mm -hmm. um, now, whether or not that's a, valiant effort or not we'll find out um but at least that's analytics that i feel a little bit better about well that's kind of another thing with instagram too like it's just getting so bloated now like originally it was just photos then it was photos and videos and that's kind of the same realm so it's okay now it's photos and instagram story or then it became photos and instagram stories and then shortly yeah, after that snapchat it became photos instagram like, stories yeah snapchat we gotta cannibalize that then it became photos instagram stories and then igtv as well which is basically like instagram saying hey we need to compete better with youtube really in twitch like you know places where you can have longer format videos and stuff um and Facebook, or Facebook, <laughs> Instagram basically is Facebook, but yeah, Instagram feels like it's training more and more towards becoming like more like Facebook, like a big bloated thing where everything's supposed to go as opposed to what it originally started out as 
which was just like a photo thing. So you used to be able to get a lot of traction on Instagram just by doing photos. And now it feels like if you want to get more engagement, more traction, more reach, you really have to be doing photos, Instagram stories, and IGTV, or just pay for it, you know? And I just don't have time to do Instagram stories, IGTV, and photos. Like, it's just, it's a lot. And we don't have the kind of money to hire like a marketing manager to do all that kind of stuff for us. So yeah, no, like I said, we, if we want, if we want more reach on Instagram, we have to pay for it. The other thing I would say though, I don't know if it's true anymore, but two years ago, um, when Jenna and I first saw the decline in our engagement and reach was the time when we first paid to promote something on Instagram. And at the time there were a lot of people who had been talking about how they suspected if you paid for an ad on Instagram, your reach, your engagement would then be dinged afterwards um, because they would see you as somebody who had money, who could spend money. So let's knock their reach in the hopes that they'll spend more money. And like, there's no way that we could confirm that without like actually talking to the Instagram salespeople or ad team or whatever, the people who write the algorithm. But like, it really felt like that because like we put up one ad and like the next week we went from getting 500 to 800 to like 250 to 400 likes per post. And it was like just within a week. So it, it's just a struggle with Instagram. It does feel toxic. It does not feel like a place that I want to be like with my business long term. Um, it's one of the reasons why I still think you really need to invest in your website, invest in your blog, invest in building a fan base and following. If you can try to use your Instagram and your Facebook to push people off of social media over to your blog over to your website places where you can like send them up regular updates. If you have like an email like that you send out on a weekly basis, that's much better too. Cause Do like, you? no, Do you? Oh gosh, no, that's so much work. Yeah. We have like an email list and from time to time we'll send out stuff like for sales and stuff like that. But I think we do it maybe once a year. I think we did it once well, last year. Let me correct that. I, I think we a... did it once last year. <laughs> <laughs> It's not something we want to do a lot because we hate getting emails. By the time you send it out, you're like, so by the time you're getting this email, you for probably have forgotten that you even signed up for our email list. Yes. Former bride or groom or family person or senior. <laughs> or <laughs> or parents senior of a senior. Or random corporate client that stumbled upon a proofing site and signed up. Oh, man that corporate conference I was shooting for Jen, it was just, it was like nonstop work, like all day, two days in a row. Yeah. Man, it was, it was a lot of fun, but it was, it drained me. It just drained me, man. But I wish we could have more corporate stuff like that. That'd be awesome. We're trying to uh, market and target for that. Love me some corporate or some. some, Well, it's nice weekday uh, work, you know? I feel like we're doing more and more of that kind of stuff, but want to figure out how to bump that up even more and do even more you know craig from a random facebook group dustin says has anyone noticed how bad the audio has been getting on instagram lately at first i thought it was just our videos and something was wrong but i'm seeing more studios other video studios put stuff up and the audio is bad on all of them but then i go back on facebook and the same film from that same other studio that they've uploaded in both places is amazing on facebook is anybody else experiencing this? It's probably just your headphones, Craig. Um. <laughs> that's, what I, that's what I initially thought, too, until he was saying he was listening to the same things on Facebook. Um, so, Dustin, have you noticed any difference in your stuff from Instagram to Facebook? No, I think you have to kind of accept when you post things on social media, um, there's this level of perfection that kind of goes out the window, with that, you have to, you know, be okay with the audio not being fantastic. You know, compression is going to be a little bit, I mean, there's ways around it, presets, you know, export presets in Premiere, Final Cut to help, you know, skirt those. But I've not noticed anything drastic where it sounds like the audio is really bad. But audio is something I really pay a lot of attention to, even though I know very little about it. Mm-hmm. Um in our video making process. I mean, bad audio can ruin your whole video. So correct. Yeah. It's one of the most important things when you're shooting video. Yep. Yeah. Something that you can only really hire a good friend for to screw up for you. Yep. Exactly. (laughs) Now we were shooting something this week, uh, 
a video of a conference. Um, it was like a doctor conference thing. And it was like the worst case scenario when it came to audio because the it was in a classroom environment. Uh, the woman uh, had a dress on and they had a lapel mic for her to go to the house system. The house system was a closed system that only projected out of the projector's speaker that was in the ceiling. Um, and I was, I needed to capture her audio for the video I was making. And uh, so I eventually, I, I made her put a second lapel on against, you know, she did not want to do that. Um, but that's what I had to do. Oh man, that sounds like fun. Yeah, it was it was super fun, and there were multiple speakers, so I had to my, I had to lapel everybody, oh, and then have the you know I use lapel on them as well. They weren't happy. They were not happy docs. But no. But what made it worse was so then this woman would throw random questions or like ask statements of other doctors in the audience that this was not something I was told was going to happen. Because so if you'd been like told it was going to happen, you would have had like I a boom mic or two pointed at the audience. Yeah. That or just a floating mic that I would have ran over and handed these other docs. Um, Cause it was like a classroom. So, I mean, we're talking like maybe 60 people, nothing like huge, but she keep asking the same three or four docs like, so what do you do when this happens and, you know, your practice or whatever? And it was like these great little audio nuggets that would have been awesome for my video. But I didn't have a camera nearby them or anything because I was on 70 to 200. It's like from the back of the room. I was like, Son of a bitch. But anyways, I digress. That was just me thinking like worst audio scenario when shooting a live event. Jeez, don't you just wish at a live event you could like just dictate it and be like, look, we're going to be doing stuff photo and video wise and we need to tell you guys how you need to do stuff so that we can actually capture everything you want us to capture. The conference I was shooting, they did like an award ceremony is for like the Indiana Broadcasters Association. It's a really, yeah. really cool like time that I spent there. I learned a lot because it's all like marketing and information also, stuff. Also got offered a job. I don't know if we need to mention that. <laughs> in but Fort Wayne. Offered a job. <laughs> offered a job in Fort Wayne then pay uh, less than half of what I make now running a business yeah. with Jen. So yeah, no, there this is go. super, super flattering. Um, but yeah, <laughs> it's so weird. So weird. But uh, no, they were, so that like when they're doing the awards, they want photos of everybody coming up to get the awards and they also want video of everybody coming up to get the awards, right? Mm -hmm. So me and the videographer are just standing like at the front, you know, and people just pop up on any side and then just kind of make their way to the front. And it's like, if they had just like made like an aisle and told everybody to like come down the aisle, it would have been super easy for us to like shoot them, you know? But right. because it's like all these different tables, like we never know where the person is, where they're coming from or anything like that. We didn't get like a layout of like, here's where the people who are winning awards will be seated or something like that, which would have been super helpful. But, you know, I don't know that even the person who made like the schedule would have known who was getting the awards ahead of time. So, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. There was one person we completely missed, me and the videographer, because he was see seated at the table right next to the awards. <laughs> won an award, stood up, grabbed the award, sat down before we even knew he had stood up. Because like we like don't ninja. know anything about anyone there. So we're basing everything based on when they announce an award, the people who are there with that person typically start clapping right away. And so people started clapping on the back right corner of the room. He was the front left corner of the room right next to the awards <laughs> table. Totally missed him. Luckily, he Threw won <laughs> two more awards that night. <laughs> so gotcha. we got him the two other times. But I was just like, is this real life right now? Like nobody even like, like our contact who was there, like kind of like motioned at me. Like when I finally looked over and saw the guy and he kind of like motioned, like the guy was right there, you know, like with his head. And I was just like, oh, we freaking missed it. Like you, you can't documentary, like candid reshoot that. Like it's, it's just gone, you know, but then he won the next award. Like literally the next award was the same guy. So we just went over and shot that extra hard. Must've been, you must've been good if he won three awards. Yeah, he was. He's also competing in the South Bend Elkhart Card Market. So smaller Ooh. market, smaller market than yeah. the Indianapolis one. Less competition yes. up there. So some people from Fort Wayne win some big awards. Yeah, some people did. Not the guy who offered me a job, though. 
Mm. <laughs> so what was the job you, he offered you? He's working in a newsroom 10 to 7 every single day. Like editing? Shooting. Shooting? He saw, he, yeah, he saw I had uh, Canon cameras, uh, 5D Mark IVs, and he was like, you know how to use one of those? You could, you could shoot a video for us, like shoot camera for our, our show. And I was like, uh, I don't know. I'm, right now I live in Noblesville. I don't know that I'd really want to move to Fort Wayne. And he goes, you don't have to move here. I just need you to show up at 10 every day. <laughs> <laughs> so like the, the, the conference I was at, like it was like part career fair, then part like uh, speakers who came to like educate broadcasters on hiring. And then part speakers who came just to educate broadcasters on like the differences in the different generations, like millennials, Gen X, Gen Y, or I guess technically millennials are Gen Y. So Gen X, Gen Y, Gen Z, because millennials don't like to be called millennials. And as a millennial, I can tell you, I hate being called a millennial. So that was nice to find out about myself. There was so much stuff I found out so about myself at the uh, conference. And it was like 50% of this is just completely wrong about every person I know who's a millennial. <laughs> but uh it was just, it was an interesting conference because they, they talked a lot about like how to market and develop your, your broadcast. And like one of the guys was specifically giving a talk about like that. And every example he gave was like, I'm doing a podcast with this person. I'm doing a podcast with this person. <laughs> it's just like, when is somebody going to stand up and talk to these broadcasters and be like, broadcasting instead? <laughs> Podcasting <laughs> is your future. Get out of, get out of radio. No. Get out of it's a, radio. It's a much different audience, broadcasting and podcasting and television and YouTube. Like, it's just, it's different audiences. So, neither one yeah, is we, dead or alive. They're all we, just functioning. Uh, being that we've done so many ribbon cutting ceremonies this year, working with the mayor um, or for the mayor, <laughs> that um, seeing the transition over the last few years where it used to be a reporter would show up with a cameraman. And nowadays, it's the cameraman shows up. And has a mic hooked to the camera, sets the cast to know how to set the camera all by himself or herself, and then do the reporting with no with no cameraman. Um, mm -hmm. There's just no budget for that kind of thing anymore. It's crazy. Yeah, I so thought now it was weird. You have to be good looking to be a camera operator. <laughs> So that's probably why they, they wanted you so bad, Steve, to move to Fort Wayne. I, probably, yeah. No, I'm I'm pretty certain I would be working on a show for them. So They were like, uh, he knows cameras and he's good looking. Thank you, Dustin. That's so flattering. Let's, let's buy you that train ticket now. All right. Let's, uh, let's jump into some questions. Let's jump, jump into, into some, some questions. questions. Yeah. Let's Matthew Dartford. Whoa, 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 Dar whoa, whoa, Dark whoa, 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 Dark Ford. Dark. Whoa, whoa, Dark Horse. Do we, we want to do a five star review before we jump into questions? Oh, we have a five star review. I, did you open put the, that in a different in a different document? Steve. I put it in a different document. We have to keep track of this. Read that first one from Wise Guy Photos. I think that's Corey. <laughs> wise guys photos i can't stop listening steve and dustin are very entertaining and full of random knowledge about wedding photography saying the things we are thinking at times saying the things that just make me think what is going on here and then man it's a great podcast i'm telling you you just won't be able to stop listening to these two and then can we go, can we add on to this five-star review, Stephen? Won't be able to stop say, listening to these two until you have a weird dream about them. <laughs> and then you'll just you turn it off. Your dream. <laughs> <laughs> Does, isn't that the making of a great podcast, though, Steve, is where you literally go to bed with us? Yeah. Yeah. I, that's a making of a great sex dream, too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 100%. Yeah. If you want to get nasty with me and Dustin, hit us up in the dream world. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. I'm going to regret saying that for the rest of my life. This is now a new level on our Patreon where we will come <laughs> into your dreams. Yuck, yuck, yuck. All right, we're going we to... Uh, the, we call it the Dreamcast. Or, or, Do you remember that? Or, remember that? Mm, yeah, no, no. Now we're advertising for Sega. Let's, instead of advertising for Sega Sega's... Dreamcast. For Sega's so defunct... Cartridges and discs. Hardware system. Let's, uh, let, let's advertise for some real companies that really love us. Let's do some Q&A. But, but Steve, 
Matthew Dartford from our very own Facebook group ask the following. Hi all, a not so hypothetical question. Let's say you have a pretty reserved bride and a quite loud laddish groom. And let's say his mates are up for a laugh. And I don't know, perhaps have a blow up doll at a wedding. And that gets involved in all kinds of, shall we say, hijinks. And let's say you've photographed it because, well, that's your job. And you know, weddings are all about moments. Now, no. given the bride, <laughs> can I is stop? Wait, reserved. can I stop you there for a second? Yeah. Weddings aren't all about moments, Matthew. Weddings are all about money. You know what I'm talking about, money. Dustin. It's all about money making that moments. money. It's all about them paying you that money. Every second that goes by at a wedding, that's more money. Money moments, as you said. Mm-hmm. I love the alliteration. That's great. We should market that. Money moment marketing done. Done. This is now the name of the podcast. Is now the money. <laughs> I forgot. What we're, I said. we're changing. We're changing the name of the podcast to Money Moment Marketing. Money Moment Marketing. <laughs> M cubed. P. All right, you can get back to uh, Matthew's M3P. question. M three P. Yeah. Um, Smiley face in the, the timeout now. Yep. Given the bride is more reserved. And so are her family. Would you share these images with them? And if so, would you include them in the gallery, which they might share with their friends and their family? Dustin, I already responded to this in the Facebook group. And I said to Matthew, make them a gallery without the inflatable dial. Then make a second gallery that's only the inflatable dial. And then send the second gallery to all their family and friends. (laughs) That way, they don't have to feel awkward about sending that gallery out but they still get to horrify their quiet, reserved family members, which is why your quiet bride married a loud, brash lad to begin with. Yep. Yeah. That, you that know, sounds great. You know, don't, don't make the groom have to brash all over the family. You brash all over the family for him, you know? Mm-hmm. I, th- I think you nailed that question, Stephen. What sort of I... questionable situations was this blow-up doll in? Was uh, was like eating the Jello? Was the blow up dial like in a situation where like it's driving and it comes to a fork in the roads and it's like I don't know if I should go left or if I should go right. Mm-hmm. One of these roads is well traveled. One is less well traveled. Which one should I take? Which will make all the difference? I tend to go down both. I go down a ways, then I come back, then I go check out the other one, and then I come back, and then I you know I sit there, I ponder, think about what decisions would make the most sense. It would be what I would call a questionable choice. A questionable choice. Mm -hmm. What other sorts of questionable choices have you made, Dustin? Uh, Whether or not to take my wife to a haunted house. (laughs) That was a questionable choice that apparently, according to you, I did not put enough energy into questioning. Right now, now you told me your wife was going to be asleep. Is she awake in bed, eyes wide open, terrified Mm -hmm. out of her mind? 100%. Is she maybe weeping in the shower right now? And then also terrified in the shower because she thinks Psycho might come for her because... I'm hoping the comfort of this new purple mattress is soothing her. Since instead of me soothing you, or excuse me, instead of me soothing her, I'm here soothing you. Mm, I do like to be soothed by that firm Dustin McKibben. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 100%. Yeah. Could you maybe so, take the blow up dial in Photoshop, maybe some clothes on it so it's not so questionable anymore? Or, Matthew, could you give the blow up doll a one of your cameras? Now the blow up doll is your second shooter. Um, and now it's now it's being paid. It's being paid to be there. And uh, you're making money off the blow up doll. Now we've just gone full circle back to Now money it's the moments. autopilot and airplane. <laughs> That's what it is, <laughs> doesn't this? This is the picture you've just painted for us. <laughs> so, Matthew, dress the doll in your clothes, give the doll your camera, and just kind of put it in like maybe a wheelchair situation <laughs> with auto burst set to your camera and just roll it down the aisle. You know, if you think about it, you give the blow-up doll your camera, you get a wireless remote. 
you <laughs> roll it down the aisle, you just got to click that wireless remote to set, set your shutter off, right? You know, now, now it's taking the pictures uh, for you while you sit back later further away. Attach a drone over the top of its head. Yeah. You, so you can fly it around. Do some wireless tethering, uh, you know, so you can actually see what the camera sees. Now, mm-hmm. now we got a blow up dial that's fully functional. It's a fully functional blow up dial. Everyone wants a fully functional blow up doll. Yeah. They should take care of all your needs. <laughs> James Kelly. What's James got to say, Stephen? Does it annoy anyone else? Wait. To see people Sorry. writing in our Facebook group when they have their own Facebook Sorry. group. Sorry. Let me, let me go what? back. Uh, James, James Kelly means? from our very own that... Facebook group, who's from Scotland. Oi, d- does it annoy anyone else? When a wedding client have all their photographs from their wedding, and on the one year anniversary, they share some shitty camera found photo on social media. Oi. That's Oi. how they talk in Scotland, right? Oi. Potato whiskey. <laughs> it's vodka. It's vodka. Yep. No, I think that was spot on James Kelly impersonation. <laughs> I think that was right on the money. I think if I went down to the Faroe Islands, that I would be like, wow. Are you Stephen or are you J- I'm confused right now. When his Irish accent gets mixed with the Faroese accent. <laughs> yeah. The Faroese accent. I'm always confused about that Faroese. Uh, James, it should annoy you because what it means is the client valued the shitty camera phone more than they valued your professional photography. Really, it's an indictment on your photography, James. Really, they're saying your photography wasn't good enough for them. Uh, Mainly what it means, James, all kidding aside, is they wanted to post something on their anniversary, quick, fast, hard, and dirty, and the fastest images they had access to was the shitty phone photos, which means, James, maybe you need to relook at how you're delivering your clients' images so that they can access them on their mobile devices so that they can share them quickly, fastly, swiftly. If all you do is give your your clients a Queensberry album, how are they going to get those Queensberry album photos onto their phone so that they can share them? If James is still using Queensberry, I think he might have made his transition. <laughs> um I've I've even seen some of our clients not the clients themselves, but parents of our clients that'll snap photos of a print and post that on social media. That's the one that really gets me. You know, James, you should just be lucky they didn't take a photo of a cell phone f- picture that was on their computer screen and post that to their Instagram. <laughs> I've seen that too. You know, James, I think Dustin and I might have said this before, but it's really, it's really about you can't compete with a photo taken by a loved one because there's sentiment baked into the photo. What like you, a good filter. What you have to do, James, is you have to become a loved one for them. Or maybe we take a different po- approach altogether. Maybe, maybe you get that blow up dial in autopilot and you let the blow up dial become a loved one to them on the day. <laughs> then you don't have to put yourself in a questionable situation. The blow up dial can do that for you. And with your wireless remote, you take all the photos, James. Mm, I love it. Yeah. You're still in control. You're still the big dog. But they have love for your your associate shooter, your second shooter, your blow-up dial shooter. Speaking of James, James from a random Facebook group asked us this one. Question for the group on something I always have trouble deciding. Do you prefer a slightly tighter crop or a wider one, usually for portraits? I prefer to just shoot portraits the way that they need to be shot so I don't have to do any cropping later on. Mm Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 But sometimes a little aftermarket crop is good, Steve. You think so? I don't think so. Steve, I know so. Okay, doesn't fill me in on this cropping. Well just sometimes uh I don't ha I don't shoot Sony yet, so my focus points are a little more limited than those who shoot Sony. Um or mirrorless for that matter. And so sometimes I'm limited to where I can set that focus point. And once I have it, you know, locked and loaded, I'll compose it 
to where I think, you know, if I can just push the client a little bit more to the edge of the frame after the fact cropping. Now, do I, do I remember that I'm doing this when I go to edit and crop? Probably not. But, um, that's my intent when I'm shooting sometimes Mm -hmm. every now and then every once and again, every once and again. And Mm -hmm. you, but you don't remember to do that when you're editing. So how is that beneficial? So if you just shot it right in the first place, like I said, yeah, everything would be good. Yep. The thing I'm finding more and more, the longer I've been shooting with, with my beautiful wife, Jennifer is Mm -hmm. I want to shoot my photos as good as possible on the day. So I have to do the least amount of editing possible in post um just with jen and i editing other people's photos mostly jen doing that okay all jen doing that editing of other people's photos um what we've seen and by we i mean she's seen and told to me is that when you have to like go through and crop and rotate a bunch of photos it just makes the gallery take a lot longer to edit so a way to cut down on your editing time in your post production is to just shoot it right the first time What a weird concept. Yeah, I know. It's so strange. And I know a lot of people out there would be like, well, batch editing exists. And yes, that is true. And yes, you can auto sync your crops across edits. So if you have like a series of photos that are all shot in the way Dustin was saying, where, you know, like your focus points aren't that great. So you shoot a little wider so you can crop down later. Then, yeah, you can just auto sync the crop across. But think about it this way. What if you didn't even have to do the crop on the first image in that series? You just saved yourself a few seconds right there. I'm a second saver. you look at the camera after the fact or the computer after the fact and realize it actually looks better wider. Or... I don't even need to crop it at all. Or you look at the computer after the fact and you just say, actually, I'm a terrible photographer. You just throw the computer out. You throw your camera out and you get a job as an accountant. (laughs) Boom. Yeah. Throw all the creative stuff away. You know what you could do as an accountant? You could target all of your photographer friends as clients because I bet they all hate accounting. Mm. or they love accounting and now you have an accounting firm you've started with all the photographers that don't work during tax season with all the photographers who also hated their job as photographers now they all want to be accountants too they've all thrown their computers and their cameras out as well because they've looked at their photos and realized they hated them because they just couldn't get the crops right the only problem is the startup cost on this accounting firm is quite high because no one has computers. So you're buying brand new computers for everybody. <laughs> uh, this accounting firm runs strictly on iPads and iPhones. <laughs> it's very progressive. Yeah. All right, Steve, I got to go. Thanks for listening to another episode of the Wedding Photo Hangover Podcast. If you love the show, please leave us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts. If you want to connect, we're at Wedding Photo Hangover on Instagram. Dustin is on Instagram at Dustin underscore McKibben, and Steve is at Stephen Van Alk. If you want to join the awesome community of listeners that contribute to the show every week, join the Wedding Hangover Facebook group. If you want to keep this podcast alive, though, Head over to Stephen Dustin Save the World and you can sign up to support the podcast for as little as $1 a month. On top of the benefit of knowing you're keeping a good show going, we've got a good thing going here, people. You also get the benefit of extra content. Uh, At $1 a month, you'll get like outtakes from all of our guest episodes. Thanks for listening and we'll see you next time your head's pounding, your limbs feel like dead weight, and your entire being aches for the sweet embrace of death. That's right next Sunday after you shoot another wedding. Yep. Sounds good. Yeah. Good night. Dustin, can I tell you something real quick before we end the episode, though? No. Dustin, I had the worst DJ this week. Mm, I think you already told me that. Yeah. Not on the podcast. Just in real life. <laughs> he cleared the dance floor. Life, Steve. He, Steve, this is real life. He cleared the dance floor with, with his bad, bad, bad DJing by, like, playing yeah. the wrong sorts of songs and stuff. Then he got people back on the dance floor by doing, like, the event things where you get people on the dance floor. And then almost immediately cleared the dance floor again by making sexist and bigoted remarks. It was... Did you call them New Harmony remarks? No, I, he wasn't from New Harmony. He's from a, the bigger city close to New Harmony called Evansville. But uh, I love that you whew. referred to that as the bigger city. <laughs> it's a pretty small city, but compared to New Harmony, it's gigantic. <laughs> It'd be like going from Fort Wayne to Indianapolis. That's how big the difference is between the two. Be more like going from Noblesville to Indianapolis, let's be honest.
Man, Dustin, yeah. have you ever had that at a wedding? Like, it was just awkward. Like, terrible DJs? Oh, mm, all the time. No. I'm like, from Fort Wayne, Steve. No, horrible not terrible DJs, DJs. All the time. Like, DJs who make remarks that are just bigoted. Like, just, he, no, he was we making don't have that. Wow. This guy just made a lot of remarks that were just very clear that he he thought it was funny to make fun of people who uh, were attracted to the same sex. Or to people who uh, or were non-binary or transitioning. And it was just like... It's uh, Southern Indiana for you. Well, no, it's not. Because all the guests were from Southern Indiana. And they're the ones who cleared the dance floor when he said these comments. So, oh. yeah. They 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 did not like it at all. They would like I saw a few like mouths go aghast at one of the comments. So it was weird. It was it was mm. weird, man. <sighs> Other than that, it was like one of the best weddings we've done all year. Like everybody there was so nice. The people were lovely. Brian and groom were great. But this like DJ was just whew, oh boy. No, the biggest thing we struggle with uh, DJs is the wedding DJs that brides hire because they, you know, met them at a bar, a club, what have you, and they're really good with music, but then they have no skills whatsoever at running an event. Yes. Because here in Fort Wayne, we don't have wedding planners and event planners at all the venues um, and all the weddings. Well, I think what you're so, looking for there really is less of a DJ or even a wedding planner. What you're looking for is a master of ceremonies, somebody correct. who can keep the show going. And there's sort of an expectation that the DJ fills that role um, during the reception. And there's, you know, every now and then you'll get that DJ who doesn't know that or, you know, they might have come from Chicago where they're used to working with a wedding planner or event coordinator that fills that role. And they get just kind of really confused or they're out of their element when they're like, Hey, can you announce dinner and it, you know, dismiss tables or announce events. And they're like, uh, I just play music. See in indie, it's usually DJs are pretty good with that. It's usually if there's somebody who doesn't know what they're doing with regards to that, it's usually a band. Um, cause bands are usually comprised of a larger group of people and it's not always the same people in the band who go out every single week, you know? And so there's not always somebody who's taken ownership of the MC role. So I feel like when we've worked with bands, there's always like the one guy in the band, the leader of the uh, band that sort of, you know, he has the iPad with sort of other music for when they take breaks and he makes the announcements like, Hey, we're going to be right back. It, most bands I would say are like that. But every once in a while, like I had a band uh, a month or two ago who like they were taking their like break so they could go eat and stuff. But that was also the time on the schedule when they were supposed to do toasts and uh, the guy refused to come out. And then a few weddings later, I was talking to a planner about this band and I was like, oh, yeah, I worked with them a little while ago. And the wedding planner looks at me and goes, when it was time to do toast, did they say they were on their break and they couldn't give a microphone to the person doing the toast? And I was like, yes. How did you know? And she's like, oh, they've done that at every wedding I've done with them. And I was like, how are they still in business? Like, and it, this was just a band we worked with recently. But like, typically if like there's a mistake where like DJs make these mistakes too, just we've had better luck with them in indie. Uh, but usually like bands will make the mistakes where like they just start an event. Like another wedding I was shooting recently, the band just started doing toasts while we were eating in the other room and they got up and left the room told us when they were leaving they're going to wait for us before they started toast and then literally just started toast didn't tell us and then uh we just like randomly were like well we should get back in there and we get in there and one of the toasts is already done and like the photographers and videographers miss it and it's like when we got in the room and they were getting up to leave like we had just sat down to eat dinner like they were eating dinner without us because like we had all gone out to do like sunset photos and stuff and it's just like so you started toast without really telling us. You just got up, left the room, and then started toast. Nobody said to us, hey, we're going to go start toast. You actually said on your way out of the room, we'll let you know if, when we're going to start toast. You know, uh, And then like you started toast while the bride and groom were like shoveling food into their faces because it's like the first time they had sat down to eat all night because they told the uh, wait staff, serve all of our guests our food while we're out doing sunset photos. This is more important to us, but we don't want our guests to wait for food. You know? Yeah. So it was just super yeah, frustrating. I had that happen one time. It was a newer DJ with a company and we were doing photo and video and the country club that we were shooting at had put us in a back room for dinner. And, um, 
he was already eating by the time we got in there and was finishing up. And he said, I'm going to go check on the sound. And he's like, but don't worry. I'll let you know before we do anything. I said, oh, great. So we have time to eat. And, you know, we kind of sat in there and, you know, reflected on the day, talked about what we were, had left to do. And then, you know, we went back out and the maid of honor was halfway through her toast. Oh, man. That's that's always a bummer. The the thing that really sucked, though, for the wedding I was at where that happened recently, it was the videographers who hadn't set up all their equipment for the toast. Yeah, so they missed, we <laughs> they missed the entire first toast. The second toast is go, starts after we get in the room, but they haven't like restarted their Zoom that's plugged into the audio soundboard, you know? And they also don't mm-hmm. have their cameras like up and rolling yet. And they had like lapel mics that they were putting on people, you know? They hadn't had a chance to do any of that. So they missed the first toast entirely. Second toast, they come in halfway through with just uh, audio from a camera. Because only one camera was set up in time because the other two videographers were scrambling to try to get all the audio stuff set up and the lights set up and everything. I mean, I only caught like two photos of the second toast. Luckily, there were like four toasts at this wedding. But I only caught like two photos of the second toast. Like that's how fast it was once we got back in the room. And it was just like, bam, bam. I was like, ISO 6400, go. So yeah, I no longer trust uh, DJs. Or bands when they make that. Well, we won't do anything without you. Yeah. Jen had that at a wedding where, like, the band just got up, went to the stage. Like, they were sit- sitting at the table with their eating. Got up, go to the stage, and just go. And we're starting toast. And it's just like, what? <laughs> I was right here next to you. Why wouldn't you tell me? So now whenever somebody makes that comment to me, that like, oh, don't worry. I won't start anything without you. I said, that's so funny you say that. Uh, somebody else said that once. And uh, as soon, like five minutes after they said that, they went out and started the toast without me. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. I think maybe so in I their minds, it. they're like, I said I wouldn't start toast without him. That was really me telling him I'm about to go start toast, right? Mm-hmm, it's like, probably. that's not the same thing. All right. We should really wrap this up. Good night. Bye. Good night. Bye. <laughs>you want to get nasty with me and dustin hit us up in the dream world (laughs) wedding photo hangover was edited this week by steve van elk of bespoke tone go to bespoke tone for all of your photo video and audio editing needs